I see you made it. Barely. <laughs> I hadn't hunted much. I'd just been kind of looking around because I know you, you were coming. We're going to spend a week here. It's the first week of January, and this is actually one of my favorite times at Togo is that first 10 days of January because the rut usually peaks out here around Christmas, and they chase hard. They get, you know, they go through the process where you see them two or three days good, then they lock down, and then, you know, from now through the 10th of January is my favorite time to be here at Togo. We had a little front come through last night. Not a lot of rain, a little rain, and, uh, man, we got a good stretch of weather coming up the next few days. Sunshine, not super cold, but cool enough to I think we'll do good. And um, instead of putting a stand up, and like we usually do with lock-ons or, or, or double bull blinds, we got some places in, in Lake Scottish Climber. And uh, I want to be mobile this week and jump around a lot because these deer are changing right now at the tail end of the rut. I wish Wilbur, Troy, and them were here, Jimmy, and we're going to be hunting here at Togo while they're up in the, at Kudzu Bluffs. And uh, it, it's going to be a, it's going to be a fun week for sure. I don't know if we do any good, but I can promise you we're going to have a good time. See that green field down there? I just sat in that field. I could see up this old logging road. I saw a really nice shooter eight point right here, so. And I didn't shoot him because I was just kind of getting out, trying to figure out what they're doing. So, Lake and I eased in here. We got a southwest wind, which just hit me in the back of the head right now, boy, like that. And this is big open woods, pecan, a lot of dewberry browse. You know, one of the main feeding areas, natural stuff other than browse as far as pecans go. But this, we cut these cottonwoods about four years ago. They're super thick. Got a little, about a 15 acre clear cut in the middle. So it's kind of a focused bedding area. And as we're walking up through here, we got just trails like crazy. But we're gonna climb lakes in that tree and we'll be in that tree. And hopefully we'll see some deer following, you know, cause they gotta go parallel with the Mississippi River right there. But they typically, I mean, they go both ways right here. I think it'll be a fun afternoon. It's like 1.30. We've got, got a lot of time before dark, so maybe we'll have a little look this evening. About 30, I think 38 degrees with a nine, eight or nine mile an hour wind, so good conditions. We're right on the tail end of the rut here at Togo. We hunted on Swamp Donkey a week and a half ago. I'm talking about a hit the rut. Couldn't have hit it no better. And we still, you know, but Togo and Swamp Donkey bordering property, so we still got a few more days, but I think our rut really peaked out about four, probably four days ago. Today's January the 2nd. So, still got another six or eight days of good buck movement, I hope. It's the first afternoon for Brad and Lake here at Togo, and boy, there's nothing better than being back in the Mississippi River bottom. After hunting at Swamp Donkey these past few weeks, and now at Togo, this dead gum river country is spoiling us. There's nothing that compares to being in the river bottoms. This country is so rich and fertile, you just never know what's about to step out of a thicket, especially during the rut and post rut. Brad grunted up a couple of deer this evening, starting with this young eight point that comes right to the tree. Followed by another young eight point that is cold trailing a doe. Man, what a fun first hunt at Togo. Well, we didn't see him at your book, but we did see two pretty three and a half year old eight points look like to me. And, uh, they did just what we had kind of hoped they would do, come out of this thick stuff. We ease out of here, we might we might make this sit again one morning. We got some south winds coming pretty consistent for the next few days. This is a great south wind stand too, so I believe we can get one here for a day or two. 
From the DNA of two of the world's foremost hunting optics, the ultimate hunting machine is born. The all-new Fusion X range-finding binocular. With an industry-first advantage, its new active sync display fluidly morphs from black to red for max visibility in all lighting conditions. Delivering hair-splitting one-yard accuracy out to one mile, all inside a bright, razor-sharp optical system, ready to make you a tag-filling machine. By Bushnell. Is it just us, or does it seem like some of today's hunting community has lost sight of what truly matters? Well, here at Mossy Oak, we believe camo has to mean something. First of all, our camo means effective concealment. It stands for a commitment to conservation. It represents a true connection to the outdoors and our friends and family we all share it with. What we stand for is in our DNA. Introducing all new Mossy Oak Country DNA. Legends aren't born, they're created. Introducing Impulse from Savage, the all new American made straight pull bolt action rifle. Unmatched innovation, fast reloads, maximized efficiency, repeatable accuracy. Welcome to American Straight Pull, only from Savage. This segment of The Truth is brought to you by Black Gold and Ripcord. Well, this morning, Lake and I, I found a place that's at the end of a, it's really right off the bank of the uh, Mississippi River. And these deer are coming around the end of a, uh, uh, just a little oxbow lake. And um, it's going into some real thick, gnarly, just a, place that doesn't get much traffic is one little road in there that don't get traveled much and I just think a lot of deer is going in there. they got some good trails so we're going to ease in there this morning in the dark and climb we're, we're about an hour and 20 minutes before daylight so I'm excited I don't know I hadn't hunted there first time in so maybe maybe them deer will be piling through there and we'll have some luck as the sun comes up we're right here on the bank of the Mississippi River you can hear a barge right there that just went by us which was pretty good because Lake and I climbed. It just kind of helped last some of that, that sound. Not that we were noisy, but you always make a little bit of noise. It's a big lake that runs for probably half to three quarters of a mile right behind us. It's a little, it necks down right here between here and the river. And they got some really, really good trails that come off of this big block of woods going into north of us. Kind of got a south wind this morning, which is right here. We hope to see one of these one of these bucks cruising. I think the rut's about. I mean, it's on the. I'm gonna say 75% done. So, kind of looking for those three or four days now where them deer start cruising again, looking for one or two of the remaining does. But uh, great little spot right here. Hope that we'll see them move this morning. So far, our little spots. You know, these deer cruised around the edge of this lake and they crossed the end of it. So, and we got a south wind blowing right over the water. So, as soon as we get a mature one cruising, I think we're going to be sitting in a pretty decent spot. So far, right at there, like there's two bucks right off the bat. But that was just a two and a half year old deer. Maybe one of the old big ones to come creeping on in here because it's real swampy and thick back to the kind of the west of us so I'm hoping we'll catch one come out of this big timber and a lot of acorn trees pecan trees back to the east hopefully we'll catch them coming back in here or cruising looking after a few bucks come through early the guys are watching the big barges coming up the river when they spot a deer running out in front of them there's a doe right there, like, actually two does in the yard. Right there behind that, that young apron.
trees and the sunshine and the green stuff. I just saw, I just saw it move. It's, it's going right behind where that does. I think that's a shooter right there. That's a pretty good buck. That's a good deer. Matt. We got him, bro. <laughs> How, uh, you know, we just saw a doe and a couple bucks go by. I mean, a doe and two yearlings go by. I've kind of messed up right now. I wasn't expecting that. Dude. She called him to the tree. He was coming. I mean, he was going to go the same way that, that those does were going to go. And. And it went, I, when I saw him in the sunshine right there, I just saw something move. And I, man, I always wear, a, have a hat with me for the sun. Man, the sun's been smoking me this morning. But like, and I got in here in a dark climb, I didn't even think about the sun coming up in my face. You know, that's one thing. If you watch them, people say, well, how do I grunt to them? There's really no right or wrong way, but just watch them. Don't overdo it. Get their attention. And I grunted. He looked at me, and I had him in binoculars like this. And he looked back where them does went, and I grunted one more time. He turned again like that, and I then started walking right to it. Yes, how awesome is that? That's a beautiful, beautiful buck, right? For 2021 and starting off, perfect. I love it. I love it, mate. Thank you, mate. You know what's fun with a bow? It's one of the oldest weapons in the world, and every year we are expected to build a better one. This year's product is to strive to get even more balanced than we've ever had before. The sight, the stabilizer, the quiver, we're looking at how that all melds together into a package that feels ergonomically like one unit. And this is where the V3X has really come in strong. One arrow says it's super straight. Another is extreme straight, whatever that means. So, what's true? Every arrow comes straight out of the box, but only one stays straight in the truck, through the air, out the rib cage, and into the dirt, shot after shot. That's gold tip straight. Start tough, stay true.
It's our second day here on Togo Island on the Mississippi River. Brad and Lake are hunting the last few remaining days of the rut. On their first sit, Brad grunted up a few young bucks. But the big boys, well, they just didn't show. The next morning, it's a cool, crisp 38 degrees. They're trying a new spot this morning, and man, did it pay off. Brad calls in a river bottom brute right to the tree. Man. Ready? Yeah. 2021 is starting off perfect. I love it. I love it, Lake. Thank you, man. Look at that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, he's, he's bigger than I thought he was going to be. I am proud of that. And I'm talking about we hit him with that grunt call. And I, I would have had a decent shot at him if he hadn't turned and started coming to us, but it just made it that much better. Dude, <laughs> I'm proud of that lake. What a beautiful morning. There's a, you can hear that. That's a river boat right there on the, going up the Mississippi River. And we shoot deer here at Togo by age. And um, I was so worried about his age. And he's, I mean, I had him instantly five and a half to six and a half. He is one absolute beautiful buck. And he's about 15 inches bigger score-wise than, than I realized when I shot him. Like I said, I was looking at body and more so than I was at. Look at the mass on him, Lake. There's just, I don't care if it's elk season, turkey season. If you're in British Columbia, no matter where, this is one of my favorite places to watch the sun come up. It's on the banks of the Mississippi River and and the whitetail deer just to harvest and i'm so so thankful for this buck but just the game that we play meaning whitetail hunting is is a year-round sport it really is if you if you do all the stuff that to, to, to grow them like this and we work really hard here at togo and then now our, our neighbor white adams and and swamp donkey we're just now starting to starting to see the potential here and um I just can't tell you, I'm so excited for the years to come and, and this and Lake, man, me and you had some good times in the woods and I just hate Jimmy and Will and Troy and Jordan aren't here with us today, but I am. Look at this buck, dude. <laughs> Look at that buck, he is awesome. I can't wait to get back and show my daughter. She's here, Morgan's here hunting. I am thankful for this deer right here. The only shooting stick with one-handed trigger pull adjustments has a new way to keep you at the top of your game. The Trigger Stick Apex. Built for sturdy support that adapts to unforgiving terrain with easy adjustments to make your big shots. With our Durasteady three-piece carbon leg design and interchangeable rock-solid clamp, nothing tops the Apex. The Trigger Stick Apex, only from Primo's. You're looking, you're looking good, buddy. You're looking good. I know it. Thank you're you. looking as good as you can. All, <laughs> all of us at Primo's are proud to be a part of the Drake family of brands. They make stuff for whatever we're hunting, whenever we're hunting. Hot or cold, I love Drake. Drake, always in season. Primo's Hunting introduces the new and improved soft-sided boat case. Our redesign is the new standard in protection for your boat. New hidden backpack straps, multiple D-ring attachments, seven accessory pockets, and the new hard case quiver holder. The Primo's soft-sided boat case has it all for bow hunters. Check it out at Primo's.com. This segment of The Truth is brought to you by Ozonics and tight spot quivers. Art and I here at Togo, we, we hunted here some lake and I did um, before the holidays and right after the first of January's here at the middle of January now. So they're hunting at Kudzu, Jimmy and Jordan and Lake and Troy. And uh, so they got they got a full crew up there, all the cameras working up there. So I said, shoot, I'm gonna go to uh, Togo and hunt with my buddy Art. But we're hunting. 
right here behind our main camp. Got a little water where the river came up not high, not near about what we've been dealing with the last few years. But came up a little bit. And what it's doing is running these deer right through these cottonwoods right here. And uh, Art and I came in here at lunchtime and hung two Millennium hang on stands. And uh, it's just a ton of tracks. You see that how that's saying that the river washed in here. A lot of current comes through here when the water gets up. So it's just kind of rolly like this, sandy. And um, a, lot of, a lot of deer coming through here. We both kind of agree that this is probably a decent afternoon spot, but we really feel like tomorrow morning is going to be a great morning spot. So we'll see what we see for the rest of the day. You never know. You never know what might happen. How's that go, guys? <laughs> magic can what that is look art spotted that deer come out of that little thicket line right there and he was making a scrape and i did the can twice he didn't hear it the first time the second time he turned his head so i just stopped then he went back to doing the scrape again or, or a licking branch and i canned again and he turned i put it in my pocket and next thing you know he turned and if you saw he was coming straight to the tree I had to let him get closer than I wanted to because he was hanging, quartering to me right there, so I had to let him get right there. I still had to shoot him in the edge of the shoulder, though, because he was quartering to me, but he fell right there, just hit the offside shoulder. I waited till he had that leg right. That's, That's what awesome. I thought, what I thought was right. Hey, we still got it, brother. <laughs> hey, you remember. Well, I, good luck, Charles. I promise you. He was quartering to me so much that I had to put the, I had to aim. I didn't want to get it up in his shoulder, but I knew because he was quartered to me because we called him, he came straight to the tree. And I had to put it right on the edge of his shoulder and come out there and, and look here. It looks high. The entrance looks high on this side, but remember, 
it's 15 yards from me. And so you got a, a steep angle. So you don't want to shoot them here at that steeper angle where it comes back out here and you don't get in the cavity. So you got to think about those angles and aim for the exit. Old can book. Old can book. He couldn't stand it. What a fun afternoon, Art. That was, man, that was awesome. Thanks. <laughs> Ain't nothing like a January 19th bow hunt, is it? That's right. Togo Island. Good job, Good job.